Our next speaker is Michelle Stormbrink, who is a senior data Senior Advisor on Data Sharing and Semantic Interoperability at TNO. Uh, Michelle's going to talk about the Vocabulary Hub to configure data space connectors. Again, this session is all about data spaces. So if you have a question, scan the QR code or use the hashtag Endorse2023 on Slido and get your questions to our speakers. For now, Michelle, are you there? We're going to hand over the floor to you. Yeah, good, uh, good afternoon. I'm here and uh, thanks very much for the invitation. Uh, to uh, to speak with you on this uh, important uh, subject. My name is uh, Michiel Stonerbrink. I'm a, a senior advisor on uh, semantic interoperability at TNO. TNO is the um, uh, Applied Research Institute in the Netherlands. And um, in this uh, presentation, I would like to uh, to position uh, the role of a vocabulary hub functionality in uh, in data spaces. And uh, I will elaborate a bit more on how it can support the configuration of the actual data space going on between part, uh, parties in, in a data space. So let me first start with, uh, well, putting the vocabulary hub in, uh, in context of, uh, of a data space. And um, I think at this moment we see a lot of um, uh, data space initiatives uh, popping up in uh, various domains in, uh, uh, in for example in the energy domain or in the public administration or around agriculture and uh, all of these uh, data space initiatives share similar challenges and also challenges on uh, data interoperability and um, i would like to focus on the, the challenges of uh, selecting the data models and the data formats to use and also designing the API specifications for the actual data space or uh, data exchange uh, in that. Um, so here's an uh, an overview of um, of a, a, a data space architecture and its uh, its components according to the International Data Spaces uh, Association. And what you see is uh, uh, data providers wanting to uh, to exchange data with data consumers. And um, uh, a connector infrastructure is there to uh, to um, and make that easy and uh, plug and play. And uh, here on the uh, right uh, uh, bottom corner, uh, there we see the role of vocabularies in terms of uh, providing the semantics for the other components in uh, in such a data space. Uh, let me uh, give you a couple of examples of where we think that vocabularies. Um, play an important role in the, in a data space. Uh, one, of course, in being able to uh, configure uh, the connector, so the APIs by which the actual data uh, exchange uh, happens. Uh, but another one is um, uh, vocabularies can play a role in data transformations or data validations that need to be done. Uh, another one is to provide uh, semantic annotations in metadata brokering services. Um, or, and this is this is more of a future research uh, or ongoing research on on how to use semantics for uh, specifying usage policies on what is allowed to do with the data and uh, what's not. And uh, just to just to clarify, in in our view, um, uh, vocabularies are um, broader than only ontologies or taxonomies. They also include. Um, uh, other formal specifications uh, to uh, uh, on on data interoperability like uh, message models and schemas, uh, but also uh, code lists or taxonomies uh, and even uh, validation specifications, data validation uh, specifications. So there's a actually a broad range of uh, vocabularies to uh, to be to support in uh, in a data space, and for that. Uh, we, we position the Vocabulary Hub as a registry service providing uh, facilities for publishing, editing, browsing, and maintaining vocabularies and related documentations. I think very much similar to uh, the tools we've seen uh, uh, in the previous, uh, uh, previous um, uh, presentations. So then moving on to the, uh, like I said, I would like to elaborate on that um, configuring the connector and the uh, the APIs based on the um, uh, on uh, semantics and vocabularies in the in the hub, and uh, that's a, a component which we've been calling the data space connector configurator, a service to 
uh, to configure a semantic interoperability for that uh, connector. So let's, uh, let's dive into that. And just to give you an, an overview of a typical situation that I uh, see a lot in, uh, in, in, the, in, uh, in the actual data exchange in the industries that I'm working for, is that based on an ontology, you want to design uh, schemas. And those schemas can be used to do the actual data exchange, for example, in XML or JSON uh, syntax uh, uh, specific uh, uh, syntax. Um, and uh, what you see there is that um, uh, most often uh, we as uh, as semantic experts talk about ontologies and data being expressed in, in RDF, uh, RDF um, um, uh, format, but a lot of the existing uh, implementations out there are in other formats, and I think we need to to bridge that uh, bridge that gap. And uh, that's what we've uh, been um, uh, developing at at TNO, a wizard-like approach to take in ontologies, uh, owl or shekel specifications, and be able to draft um, uh, schema specifications from that. But for a more um, advanced scenario where either or both of the uh, organizations that want to exchange data already support um, um, uh, uh, RDF or a, a more semantic um, uh, implementation, uh, semantic uh, technologies. Um, we can also think of, well, you could um, generate from that wizard also a mapping file uh, using the open standard uh, RML, the RDF mapping language, to do actual data transformations from these um, uh, more uh, uh, traditional XML and JSON schemas to uh, or uh, uh, formats to um, uh, knowledge graph uh, technology. So uh, let me give you an, uh, an, a brief overview of um, of uh, with with some screenshots of the tooling we are working on uh, in this uh, in this respect. So that's on this this uh, wizard to create these ontology based uh, exchange uh, specifications. We start with a, a step one where we set up the scene in, well, what is the use case? What is the, uh, the interface that's being used here? And uh, in that we select the, uh, uh, you see that uh, here on the, on the bottom left uh, hand side, we select the in ontologies we want to uh, import. And then in a next step, we get a tree view like uh, structure where the wizard is providing the options we have in the, in the ontology to include or not to include, or maybe provide additional restrictions on the data. Um, and this is where business analysts or business IT analysts can, can draft the, uh, the use case based on the, uh, the input of, from the ontology. And then in the final step, we go to the uh, generation and uh, generator uh, uh, step where um, uh, the, the wizard provides, um, for example, XML schemas for the actual exchange, but also, like I said, a RDF mapping uh, specifications to do the transformation if that's uh, uh, for the more advanced uh, scenario. And um, other um, uh, types of syntax like JSON or CSV or others are uh, can be included uh, as well. Um, and of course, if you then take, for example, a JSON uh, syntax as output that can be used directly in an open API specifications, yet another uh, open standard to, uh, to formalize these, uh, these data exchanges. And, um, uh, and, and from there on, you can import these specifications um, in your connector and be uh, ready to, uh, to share the data in the, uh, in the data space. Looking ahead, what, is, uh, what, what are the next steps? Together with the um, International Data Spaces Association, we are elaborating the vocabulary hub functionality and, um, uh, and uh, publishing that in the, in the next release of the reference architecture model. Um, TNO is also working on an implementation of such a vocabulary hub. We call that Semantic Treehouse, and it's being open sourced uh, at this moment. And uh, together with industry partners, we are, um, well, applying these kind of technologies uh, in uh, various uh, sectoral uh, data spaces. Uh, that concludes my presentation uh, for now. And uh, if you want to um, uh, 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 talk to me about it, uh, please reach out. Uh, and I also would like to encourage you to uh, read our position paper 
uh, on uh, using the link um, here on the, on the screen. Michael, thank you very much indeed for that presentation. Uh, we do have some questions coming in. Now, uh, I'll, I'll start with one. I think you already rather touched on it in your presentation, but one of our audience members did ask, how do you handle incompatible data models, for example, XML versus RDF-based models? Yeah, so so incompatibility can be on two different aspects, so on the, on the syntax or on the structure, uh, but also on the semantics. And uh, on the uh, on the syntax or so the format, uh, there we we see a potential for this um, this RDF mapping language to do these uh, transformations. And already a large part of those uh, specs we can we can generate from the input uh, uh, based on the uh, the the, uh, the wizard uh, output. Uh, but on the more uh, semantic um, um, uh, well misunderstanding or or, or uh, uh, issues. That's another area, of course, uh, and uh, 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 which which I, I I don't which in which we don't elaborate in this uh, uh, in this approach. Okay, is the vocabulary hub accessible for everyone, and where can we get access to it? If you want to reiterate where people should go searching. Yeah, so so um, for a couple of um, um, sectoral bodies, we already provide a uh, a, a instance of this uh, of this uh, this platform um, uh, in a couple of European projects where TNO is participating in in um, uh, providing these, uh, data spaces. We are providing uh, for such a vocabulary hub. Uh, it, probably it will be an open instance, uh, especially after the project. Um, uh, and like I said, uh, TNO is also open sourcing the tooling. Uh, so I, I uh, expect that um, uh, within a quarter, maybe two, uh, people can find it via our website uh, and, and get access to the code and maybe deploy it themselves. Uh, but please reach out if you are interested in it. Uh, and a quick, another quick question before we have some of the more complicated yeah. ones. Is the wizard oh. available for testing? Uh, uh, I, I can't point you to a test uh, to an open testing environment, but uh, uh, if you do want to perform some tests, please reach out and I will give you an account in one of the existing uh, uh, implementations. Okay, so uh, probably a little bit more of a, a challenging or a more esoteric question is, uh, can you define what data spaces means? It's a concept we talk about, yeah. it's, it's the subject of this section of today's event. Uh, well, how do you define it as, as narrowly as you can? Yeah, it's uh, to be honest, that's that's a very tough question because yeah. it, it it we can think of uh, of it a lot, but if I need to explain it uh, um, uh, in very uh, a brief and easily uh, uh, easy terms, I would say it's a data space is a uh, agreement uh, between different organizations um, uh, to uh, to share data um, uh, 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 based on the agreements they made, and those agreements are on technical. For, for technical interoperability, semantic, legal, and also organizational interoperability. So it's a it's a basically a set of agreements by which the organizations share data, and uh, that can be as small as a sectoral body with uh, maybe a, a few dozens of organizations, but can also be a very large community uh, of, uh, for example, in the uh, e in cross sectoral e invoicing industry, yeah. where um, many organizations uh, can be uh, are able to share um, uh, uh, share invoices with each other. Well, to build on that, that's quite a good question. Is do you think data spaces should comply with linked data principles and use distributed semantic repos rather than connectors copying data? Well. Uh, I, I think they they definitely uh, it's it's not a must, uh, okay. but I think we can we can recommend um, uh, certain aspects of the semantic uh, uh, semantic web technology stack uh, because we know of the advantages that it brings to the uh, to the data space. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, it's a it's a set of agreements between different uh, organizations. So I think it's uh, it should be up to the to the governance structure of that data mm -hmm. space. To decide uh, upon which uh, which technologies to use, and to be honest, a lot is going on in that uh, in that area at this moment in terms of the Gaia X uh, uh, developments or uh, uh, or other uh, more uh, infrastructural um, uh, um, well uh, frameworks that are uh, being uh, put forward. 
I think this is still in, uh, in a work in progress, uh, but I, uh, at least from my side, I'm advocating the use of, uh, of um, uh, tools and, and technologies from the semantic uh, uh, interoperability stack. And then finally, to come back to your presentation, how will you maintain mappings, uh, mappings over time? Uh, I think that's that's a, a question that we can uh, uh, and, and should talk about uh, for uh, for some uh, some longer period. Uh, we need more time to uh, to do that. Uh, but I think um, mappings in itself are just like other specifications, also something you need to uh, publish, maintain, and uh, and maybe also phase out. Uh, so um, that's why, uh, like I said. Um, um, we have different kinds of specifications that need to uh, manage uh, taxonomies, code lists, but also uh, uh, um, uh, mapping uh, specifications. Well, thank you very much, Michel, for your presentation and for dealing with all those questions. We do appreciate it.